So, um, well, I hope that this is going to work. Ah, it does. Um, I'm Stefan. Um, I want to say thank you to the organizers um, that they um, gave me the opportunity to um, present a small um, application here that um, honestly was looming in our shelves for about a year now. And I think it's um, useful to provide this um, to the wider community. Um, we're talking about um, seamless stitching um, without blending, which means intensity correction. And um, to motivate this, I basically need um, a single slide. Um, you see here a stitch of a large image um, at Janelia. We have um, uh, recently started the project um, among the four labs of Davi Bock, Rick, Richard Fetter, um, Albert Cardona, and myself um, to image a full adult um, fly brain and extract connectivity from that. And um, the method, the imaging method that we're using is um, serial section transmission electron microscopy. And in order to image this uh, massive piece of tissue, um, you actually embed it in, 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 in plastic. You section it like a, um, a series of salami slices. Each of these salami slices is 40 nanometers in thickness. And we see one of these um, slices here on the screen. Um, uh, we image that at 4 nanometer per pixel uh, resolution in XY, um, which results in mosaics of um, these extents. Each of these individual images um, about 2.5K by 2.5K. Um, which results in, in, a, in a field of view of 200,000 pixels times 150, roughly. Okay, so this is what we're seeing here. Um, we see that um, stitching and alignment works. This is um, earlier work um, um, from us and others. Um, but we have all these um, horrendous intensity variances in this image, right? And, and you see this in basically um, all microscopy acquisitions. And one can fix this by imaging a bright field and dark field, but um, in reality, um, about 10% of all the people um, acquiring images actually do that. And most of the time, you end up with um, very much in, um, insufficient results like this one, where um, even somebody decided that um, doing um, per image um, histogram equalization and then storing them as 8-bit images um, was made. And now we have these 8-bit images, and we don't know what the, actually expo the actual exposures were. All right, so how can we fix this? Um, this is a mosaic with um, overlapping images, um, and I'm depicting this in um, this little graph. Um, we have all these images. Every image has a different transformation. In this simple graph, we say that the images are just translated and rotated. In reality, we have also a lens deformation and an elastic deformation involved. And um, we want to make these images look equal in the overlapping parts. All right? Oh, I'm sorry. Now I spoiled it. Um, um, we do this by um, splitting every individual image into a grid of um, linear intensity coefficients. And we want to estimate uh, an intensity transfer function for each of these grid cells, um, such that over the image, everything is kind of smooth. And in the overlapping parts, they look similar. All right. So this results into a, a cost objective that we see down here, um, assuming that x and y are pixel intensities in one of these grid cells um, where they overlap. We want to make them be most similar up to a, uh, in a quadratic term. And we want to do this for all grid cells, alpha and beta, in all images at the same time. Okay? So what we do is we render these images at a particular scale, um, uh, find out which pixels overlap, um, collect them. This is the intensity distribution. And then we try to identify um, a transformation that maps these x and y's accordingly. So if this intensity transformation is a simple linear function, that the trivial solution would be to scale them all to 0, and then they look all the same, and the cost function is perfectly solved. So we cannot do that. Um, we have to um, regularize it by uh, additional terms. And it turned out that regularizing them by um, a non-scaling function that only allows shift, so we want to allow shifts because the intensities have been shifted, um, is a good thing, but that leads to a situation where the intensities are globally shifted to an arbitrary point. So we also um, regularize them uh, with a with a um, lower amount towards the identity model. So overall, the intensities in the entire solutions um, have the same mean. Okay. So um, a picture tells more than thousand words. This is the regional situation, and if we apply this, um, um, we get something like this. And if we zoom in, this is the original situation. We see here is an image that is much darker 
and after applying this, um, this changes into better. And you will also appreciate that the overall intensity of the image doesn't change, the overall contrast doesn't change, it's basically we're just removing the bullshit. Um, if we do this across the series, it's actually um, even more important. This is a, a, an XZ projection of the registered series. Every pixel row here is a series and we're running through the um, Y dimension and we see that every section has a different exposure and we can apply the same thing um, across the section series and then the result is something like this that gives us a nice impression of the volume, all right? Okay, and this is the situation where I want my remaining three minutes to do a live demonstration. Um, this is Fiji. We open a Trachium 2 project. Um, I hope this afternoon this um, method will be available in the most recent update of Trachium 2. Um, we, sorry, this was the wrong button. We open a recent project, we should have done it before. Um, this is a small crop out of the project that I showed you earlier. Um, we see that it's um, well aligned, but the intensities spoil the experience. So continuity in Z is nice, but it flickers. Okay. So now we search an example section where it looks um, particularly horrible. Let's say this one with an image that is very bright. Um, we do right click, um, which is the operation in Trachium 2 that does everything. We go to adjust images and have here new, two new um, menu points, say match intensities. It pops up a dialog that asks us for how many sections we want to do this. Because we lack time, we do it only for one. Um, we use 0.1 um, as a scaling factor to actually um, capture these intensities. And then some other parameters here, the regularization parameters. And you see the regularization is just minor. And we have this moving term that's just um, requires that the adjacent grid cells look um, kind of similar. We press OK, and then if we see the lock window somewhere, it tells us that it's calculating all these coefficients, then it's optimizing for 2,000 iterations, um, shows us the differences here, and then updates um, the images. So this is not a super small data set. Um, you see now they're, they're updated. It all looks a little better, and we can zoom in um, to make this more apparent. And to have a direct comparison, we can actually um, export this into an image J image. So this 10,000 pixels and width takes a little moment and should pop up here. OK, this is image one. Then we go back here, um, remove the intensity map click, which gives us the original image, then we can export that. And then we use ImageJS stack to um, compare this. Where's the ImageJ window? This screen is small. Um, sorry. We want to go here. And then we want to go to the MJ toolbar, make a new slice, copy this image here. And if you now go forward, it's basically just removing the bad parts. And the rest of the intensities remains the same. And if you zoom in into this particularly bad area, you can see that it makes things nicer. That was it. Back to the presentation to um, thank a few people. Um, in the first place, my lab, Philip Hanslowski, who helped implement it, um, and, and John Bogovic, who, who you heard talking later, and Crystal Sullivan, who is organizing us. Um, then in Genelia, the labs of Albert, Rick Fetter, Davi Bock, and Tara Tessio generated the data. Um, Wayne Raspin for making image J. Where is he? Thanks. And the whole uh, Fiji team, uh, including Curtis, Johannes, Mark, Heiner, um, Kevin, and Pavel, for having Fiji run and for funding um, Janelia Farm, the Max Planck Institute, and um, all the rest who is involved in the Fiji project. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Questions? Yeah.
It's right now it's in Trachium 2, but you can easily um, exclude it. So the answer is yes and no, which in Boolean algebra means kind of no. It's in Trachium. It's in Qubit. Excuse me? Yeah, it's in, it's in track EM2, but it's a, it's an easy part, so it's, it's in its own package, and the, so, so I've just, just pushed it on, on um, I mean, yeah, where is Chrome? Here we are. So it's somewhere, I read your privacy policy of the swamp. Um, yeah, so it's over here, and you can see what, what, what just happened. So the last commit is from yesterday afternoon when I modified the things to make it a bit more impressive. You can also apply it to 3D. So the the um, intensity map application is all ImageLib2 based, so it's n-dimensional. Um, just um, collecting the coefficients would have to be implemented um, using ImageLib2 because now it uses Trachium2 as a rendering engine to uh, run that data. Other questions? And thanks again.